Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In terms of IMS concepts and drivers, we've essentially got three different areas that we'll discuss in this session. We'll begin with looking at some of the driving factors behind IMS. In particular, we'll focus in on services and also IP transport. We'll continue with a look at potential IMS services and we will conclude with a consideration and a comparison between the IMS and internet-based services. Let's look at the driving factors to begin with and we're going to tackle services first of all. Now if you were to look at the way in which services were introduced and designed in a traditional telecommunications environment, you tended to see a very monolithic approach to their design and implementation. You, you might hear this called a stovepipe approach whereby for one service the associated subscriber database, any billing and security are all rolled into that one service. If we put next to it a second service, well, that monolithic approach would mean we'd have a repetition of those subscriber databases, billing and security. It's quite an inefficient way to implement services. Also, if you look at the internet and the way services are introduced in the internet, it's a very open framework. Anyone can come along and develop the latest killer application. So the 3GPP wanted an architecture whereby it was easier for service providers to introduce and implement new services without necessarily reworking lots of the existing databases, lots of the existing security mechanisms and such like. So we wanted an easy architecture for introducing new services without repetition of existing features. That was one driver. A second driver is the whole notion of IP transport, which is essentially what the IMS is based on. In this particular diagram, we can see that a particular subscriber has started off a session on Wi-Fi. So that session is being delivered. Whatever media might be associated with the session is being delivered across a Wi-Fi access network. Now remember, the IMS is IP connectivity access network agnostic. So we could start a session off on Wi-Fi and notice at this point the resultant media is not actually flowing through our IMS. However, what the IP transport based mechanisms associated with the IMS allow is service mobility. So we could go from Wi-Fi to LTE whilst maintaining an ongoing session of some description. So we can transfer to different networks. What we can potentially also do is transfer that session to different terminals. So we've maintained the session despite the fact that we've changed terminals and changed access networks. And if we happen to go to an access network, that means we potentially have a slightly downgraded service. Well, the IMS can manage that as well. So we can scale back quality as appropriate. All of that functionality, moving between access networks and terminals and upscaling or downscaling quality, would all be handled by the IMS within that ongoing session. So that's some of the drivers. We've looked at services and we've looked at IP transport. Now let's just consider some of the services. Now this is just representative of what you may see. It is not a conclusive or definitive list of services and indeed some of these services you may never see hosted on the IMS. So multiplayer gaming might be one example where the internet is probably a better medium for hosting multiplayer gaming but certainly things like voice and video calling with the introduction of GSMA IR92 which is Volte or voice over LTE and IR94 which is video calling well the, the two in the top left hand corner have, are already out there, they're already standardised. So we may or may not see these potential IMS services, but the thing to point out here is, well, the IMS is an open framework. So these services may come along at some point, but 
With a service provider deploying the IMS, it means that these services will be easier to introduce. The final area we'll consider in this session is just a comparison between what the IMS offers and what the internet offers, because there's often a lot of criticism to say, well, why do we need an IMS? Because you can do all of this out on the internet. Why would subscribers potentially pay for IMS-based services when they can get them on the internet for free? And it's a, it's a big contentious issue. Just some points to note though. Billing, for instance. If you look at internet-based services, you tend to find that you pay one bill for your movies, potentially another bill for your voice services. Whereas if those services were IMS-based, we could have a converged billing system. Likewise, things like service mobility. If the service is orientated in the internet, it is very difficult to maintain session continuity if we move between different access networks. Whereas if the sessions are controlled by the IMS, it's easier. QoS is another key differentiator if you compare internet and IMS-based services. There is no QoS on the internet, however with the IMS that tends to be associated with a controlled managed IP transport network in which QoS can be implemented effectively and appropriately. And the final point to make is the internet is an uninhibited development environment. Anyone can come along and develop the next killer application for the internet. The IMS is not quite like that. It's an open development architecture. However, it's controlled by the service provider as to exactly what services are on offer to the customer, which some think is a, a significant drawback. So just in summary then, we talked about some of the driving factors behind the IMS. We said that the requirement to create a flexible framework for introducing new services was a key driver. And we also said that migration of service delivery towards IP transport was another key driver. We discussed the fact that many potential IMS services exist, but they're all not necessarily encountered to date in IMS networks that have already been deployed. And indeed, things like Volte or Voice over LTE are actually primary drivers for deploying an IMS in the first instance. We also talked about differentiators between the IMS and the internet. They are not the same service frameworks. They are very different architectures for delivering services. Key differentiators include billing, quality of service, and indeed this notion of service mobility or seamless mobility where we can maintain our sessions despite the fact that we've moved between different transport networks. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.